as the successor to the NES, few consoles are as beloved by gamers as the Super Nintendo Entertainment System is. For many gamers, it's where they first fell in love with the medium, while for others, it epitomises the absolute height of 2D and retro gaming. Regardless of why the system is so beloved though, the many great games on the console no doubt play a hand in that. From all-time classics in some of Nintendo's biggest franchises, to the creation of fun new series, to the evolution of gameplay as we know it, the strong reputation of SNES games is well deserved. So with these factors in mind, here are our picks for the 20 best SNES games of all time. Before that though, how do you pronounce SNES? I actually pronounce it SNES most times because I am lazy and it's less syllables, but I also want to leave this video alive. Let us know your way of saying it down below. Remember, nobody's wrong unless you pronounce it SNES, in which case you're weird. Number 20, Sim City. There were basically no console games at the time of SimCity, save perhaps Mario Paint, that allowed players to be this creative. Taking on the job of mayor and city planner all in one, players are free to build a city almost however they like, provided they've got the resources. Managing supplies, creating a city in your own image, and inevitably dealing with one crisis after another in hopes of appeasing the citizens is what makes a game like SimCity tick, and it's pretty much the first of its kind. It might sound stressful, especially without the granular control you get on PC, but it's also a total blast still. Such a shame though that the series has basically turned into a ghost town, or ghost city rather, in the last decade. But hey, at least we've got city skylines and it's giant rivers of poo now anyway. Number 19, Super Punch-Out. As is the case with many of the best games on the SNES, Super Punch-Out benefits from having much of the legwork done by its predecessor and just being left to improve upon the product as a result. Just be warned though, this one is pretty tough and it requires a very precise understanding of the mechanics in order to become the new heavyweight champion. Super Punch-Out is also the absolute epitome of easy to understand but tough to master gameplay, as the player must duck and weave their way through one brutal fighter after another in hopes of becoming the world champion. This one is just endlessly replayable, which is lucky because you're going to need to play it over and over and over and over again to have any chance of beating it. You could almost say it's the Dark Souls of... Bo okay, I won't, okay, I, okay, we're not doing that anymore, okay fine. Number 18, NBA Jam. One for all of the jam up guys out there, one of the things that made the SNES so great was how many incredible must play two player games it boasted. Hands down one of the most addictive was NBA Jam. This is a game that takes a standard sports game and essentially introduces anime rules, allowing you to pull off all kinds of crazy nonsense in its 2 on 2 approach. If you want to hurl a flaming basketball all the way across the court and watch it sink in like it's a limit break attack in Final Fantasy, this is the game for you. There were a few sports games that could even come close to matching the fun factor of NBA Jam, and the game is still fondly remembered today as a result. There aren't enough sports games like this these days, let's be real. Someone should really resurrect EA Sports Big while they're at it. But does anyone really want to play SSX with Ultimate Team in it? Don't know about that. Number 17, Contra 3, The Alien Wars. It seems like no other game on the generally family-friendly SNES can boast as much carnage and empty lead cartridges as Contra 3, The Alien Wars. This game is a blistering challenge to play, but the insanely imaginative visuals of the boss fights make them worth getting to every single time, if you can of course. A non-stop blitz of never-ending projectiles and the splattering guts of extraterrestrials, this game laid the groundwork for how the Contra series would be remembered, and many still argue that it's among the best games in the series, even if it is almost impossible to beat by those who don't hate themselves at least just a little bit. Sounds like my kind of game then. If you ask us, it's about time that Konami reloaded Contra. And no, Rogue Corps does not count, don't mention that. Number 16, F-Zero. One of the very first games to launch for the SNES is also the first game in what would become another new franchise for Nintendo that they also then just completely forgot about Nintendo, what are you doing? F-Zero took racing to a whole new level, with its treacherous futuristic courses, colourful cast of post-apocalyptic drivers and exploding cars, F-Zero was a racing game that was unlike anything anyone had ever seen before. Though the series has struggled to stay relevant since this initial release, that doesn't put even a blemish on this fun and original racer. An exciting and original racing game that still holds a special place in the hearts of fans, 
F-Zero arguably hasn't aged as well as Super Mario Kart, at least as a franchise, but it still remains an airtight experience and one of the best SNES games for those who love hitting crazy speeds. Few games can match F-Zero in terms of spleen crushing speed and sense a reward for, for mastering every dastardly corner. Number 15, Donkey Kong Country. This has to be one of the most memorable games for anyone who had a Super Nintendo growing up, and not just because of that traumatising cart level. No one on the playground was safe from the hype surrounding Donkey Kong Country. From the revolutionary graphics that put developer Rare on the map, to its intricate level design, to all of those fantastic bosses. While the visuals might not be as mind-blowing as they were for 90s kids, Donkey Kong Country still looks better than almost any other SNES game. All the same, this is one of the toughest games on the SNES, but it's also among the top of the heap, along with its two increasingly ambitious sequels. It's been far, far, far too long since we last saw a brand new Donkey Kong game, inclusive of Funky Kong or not. It's about time that changed, eh? Number 14, Final Fantasy IV. When talking about Final Fantasy games on the SNES, the conversation naturally turns to Final Fantasy VI more than any other game from the time period. Still, Final Fantasy IV is a memorable and meaningful addition to the series as well that is fondly remembered by longtime fans of all things Final Fantasy. Introducing the iconic and influential active time battle system, a huge cast of characters that come and go over the course of the game, and an adventure that literally takes you to the moon and back, Final Fantasy IV deserves its spot in the conversation when it comes to the greatest and most important games in the Final Fantasy series. Yet does undeservingly find itself left as something of a surprisingly overlooked classic across all 120-something Final Fantasy releases so far. I mean, it's no stranger of paradise, but it's still pretty good. Number 13, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. While this game was a little bit divisive at the time of its release, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island has since gone on to earn a strong cult following, with many Mario fans putting the game among the very best of the Mario series. With its bright pastel colours and gorgeous art style, the sequel brought a whole new flavour to the series. All the same, this one changed things up a lot from its predecessor, focusing on Yoshi rather than Mario and turning our hero into a whiny little annoyance, to put it nicely. Regardless though, most fans appreciated the sequel once they got used to its much different gameplay style and level design, with it often lauded as one of the best SNES games ever for good reason. Would you like to see a remake of this on the Switch or inevitable Switch 2? We definitely would. Number 12, Super Castlevania 4. The modus operandi for games that crossed over from the previous generation was bigger and better. We can see this in countless examples from the SNES, but Super Castlevania 4 offered some of the coolest examples. The look and feel of the levels took full advantage of the system's capabilities, leading to some insane visuals for the time. With the ability to swing Simon Belmont's whip in eight different directions, a massive uptick in enemy design, and levels that took full advantage of everything that the SNES was capable of, Super Castlevania 4 is still brought up among the very best of Konami's vampire fighting franchise. Castlevania may have many indie inspirations these days, but few have managed to capture the same kind of magic. Number 11, Mega Man X. Few games that made the jump from NES to SNES were able to boast the kind of jaw-dropping transformation that Mega Man X has. While the many entries on the NES by this point were fun enough in their own right, there were few innovations between each title, as the series racked up a pile of new games year after year. Bet Mega Man fans wish that was the case now, huh? Mega Man X changed this by planting secrets in every stage, giving the titular android upgradable parts, and introducing new characters like Sigma and Zero, who are still iconic to this day. While there have been many, many Mega Man games over the years, Mega Man X remains one of the absolute most beloved, for good reason. Plus, if you like giant, almost impossible looking bosses at the end of your game, this one offers up one of the all-timers. It could even give the Icon of Sin a pretty good run for his money. Number 10, Earthbound. One of the most fun things to remember about this time in gaming is just how many totally bizarre and out there games were coming out seemingly every week. 
Like Zombies Ate My Neighbours, Earthbound was a game that was as deliberately silly and over the top as it was endearingly original. With a surprisingly deep story, a penchant for comedic side plots and some of the wackiest visuals of the era, Earthbound remains one of the biggest cult classics in gaming history nearly three decades later, as well as one of the most ludicrously expensive retro games on the market. Seriously, look up boxed copies of this on eBay in 2023. It's uh, a bit mental. No wonder Reggie is hoarding all the copies of Mother 3. We're on to you, laser eyes or not. Number 9, Street Fighter 2 Turbo. What's so incredible about the Super Nintendo is how games that had come out before were able to slowly be improved in real time. The SNES saw three different iterations of the Street Fighter franchise, but only one of them remains an all-time classic to this day, and that's Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Adding in new characters, additional modes, and a never-ending reason for you to fight your best pals with one carefully crafted character after another, Street Fighter 2 Turbo is easily one of the most influential fighters ever. Finally, there are very few games out there that let you beat the ever-loving crap out of a convertible, which is still a timeless minigame to this day. We are still waiting for Capcom to make the car the final boss in a new Street Fighter game. Do it, cowards. Do it. Number 8. Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars Super Mario RPG is one of the absolute most legendary Dream Team projects of all time. Even more so than Devil May Cry 2 and Diesel, if you can believe it. To see Nintendo give their characters and their world over so holly to Square just went to show how close the two once were, and how much trust Nintendo had in the acclaimed developer. The game that would eventually give birth to the Big N's own Paper Mario series, Super Mario RPG is a brilliant evolution of the Super Mario franchise that still holds up nearly 30 years later, and is always on the shortlist when it comes to discussing the best SNES games ever, as well as one of the finest RPGs ever published by Nintendo. Here's hoping the remake has even an ounce of this banger's charm. Are you looking forward to it? Let us know down in the comments! Down below. Number 7, Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Kong Quest. Of the three original Donkey Kong Country games, there's a pretty clear winner when it comes to the best of the best. Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Kong Quest lets you feel what it's like to always be the little guy in the room, who would also then go on to star in the best karting game on the N64, Fighters. With no Donkey Kong to be the bruiser on the team, working together with your alternate character becomes absolutely essential. Still, the brilliant level design and intimidating difficulty curve means that you're constantly replaying levels to look for the next secret, and that with each passing world, your platforming skills are always being pushed to the absolute limit. Also, Dixie's hovering ability is a total lifesaver. There's no Donkey Kong rap in this one though, so it's basically trash! Number 6, Final Fantasy 6. Even with heavy hitters in the series like Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy IX, there's a reason why so many JRPG fans cite Final Fantasy VI as the best game in the franchise. First of all, this was the first Final Fantasy game to move away from a traditional medieval setting and into steampunk territory. Furthermore, this was also the first game in the series to be about more than doing stuff with crystals. Funny how Final Fantasy XVI would loop back to that about 25 years later. Then came all of the graphical and sound improvements. With a bevy of post-game content and one of the greatest soundtracks ever, Final Fantasy VI is easily the most beloved of the retro Final Fantasy titles. A true genre-defying masterpiece, Final Fantasy VI is one of the most important games in Square's history, and it helped to set the benchmark for what this series would inevitably become, with one of the most shocking moments in video game history that still hits hard today. Breaking into the top 5, it's Super Mario Kart. The game that launched one of Nintendo's most popular franchises ever remains just as fun today as it was when it first came out. Though the Mario Kart entries that have come since have each added their own gimmicks or changes to the formula, this is one game that was basically perfect from the jump. Adding in ways to sabotage your opponents helped to level out the difficulty curve of other racing games and made upsets always a possibility, no matter how far ahead you were of the second player. Meanwhile, learning all of the secret pathways, tricks for utilising each item, and how each character performed in different circumstances added further layers of depth to the game. Mario Kart, destroying friendships and ruining romance for decades. You can't quite beat it. And Nintendo even seems to know this themselves, as they've basically released the same game 
for the last 10 years. Hey, if it sells like a billion copies a day, don't change what ain't broke, I guess. Number 4, Super Mario World. As with The Legend of Zelda and Metroid series, despite all of the games that have come out in the series since Super Mario World, Mario and Yoshi's SNES adventure is still fondly remembered by many as the absolute best of the bunch. With its many mysteries hiding in plain sight on the overworld map, no Mario game had ever changed throughout your playthrough in the same way that Super Mario World did. Secret exits could be found in the most unlikely places, and they opened the way to possible switch rooms, secret levels, or simple map shortcuts. This left gamers endlessly replaying every single level in the game until the star symbol appeared next to the level exit count on the title screen, and they knew that at last, they found every last secret. But it's no secret just how good this game is. Number 3, Chrono Trigger. When people say that Square was at its absolute peak in the 90s, it's largely because of mind-blowing JRPGs like this one and Final Fantasy VI on the SNES. Not only did Chrono Trigger give you a big open world to explore and navigate, it changed that world over and over again depending on which time period you were playing in. Figuring into side quests, plot progression and offering a whole range of secrets to discover, this feature also allowed players to take advantage of time travel to manipulate the future, an idea that is still kind of mind-blowing to this day. Add in one of the most likeable casts in any RPG ever, and you've got a Stone Cold Classic and one of the very best SNES games, and perhaps the game out of everything on this list that has aged the absolute best. If you've never tried it before, give it a play, it still feels remarkably fresh. Number 2, The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. Even in the wake of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, many still offer the crown of the best Zelda game ever to this SNES gem. Once again, where The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past succeeds is by taking the framework behind the original NES game and expanding it to bring the formula up to the next level. With tons of items, heart pieces and other secrets to find across its vast dual world, A Link to the Past is as effortlessly fun today as it was back in the early 90s. Furthermore, the way that the world had changed from light to dark would go on to become not just a signature of the series, but also an inspiration for Link's time travel in Ocarina of Time, and the changing of the seasons in Oracle of Time and Oracle of Ages. Top 5 Zelda game of all time? It just might be. And number 1, it's Super Metroid. Few games can lay a claim to having had as much of an impact on the medium of video games as Super Metroid. One of the two games which are largely responsible for the subgenre known as Metroidvania, the other one of course being FIFA 95, Super Metroid's intuitive exploration and the secrets that hid behind every corner of its world marked it as a true game changer. The game is also fondly remembered for its masterful soundtrack. While its totally enthralling use of world the storytelling throughout helps to set it apart from just about any intergalactic adventure before or since. There's a reason that this is one of the most popular speedrunning games nearly 30 years after its release. People want to keep finding reasons to play this absolute gem of a game. Also, Samus is always really, really cool. I love her shoulder balls. Hi there, it's me, Shigeru Miyamoto. Did you know that the S in SNES actually stands for Shigzi? Don't look that up, it's correct. Do you want to see a new F-Zero game? If this video gets 15 million likes, I will consider it. Big Shigs, signing off. Thanks for watching.